Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Thursday, January 19, 2023. Looks like we're going to be receiving some snow finally. So stop the grass from growing for the next, uh, I don't know, four or five, maybe six days. But before we do that, it's time to catch up on our 1950 22-foot Shepherd runabout. She's blasted through another major milestone. We've finished stripping the entire hull. We've begun then the next steps before we can bleach her. So I thought I would walk us through several issues that we've encountered and that you will encounter uh, when it's your turn to restore or preserve one of these wonderful old woodies. She's pretty original in terms of her deck planking, her covering boards, um, pretty original. This aft deck, as you can see by the difference in color, has been completely replaced. All, all of this is new. And unfortunately, whoever replaced it inserted individual planks and didn't bother to open up Sycaflex seams, which we are now in the process of doing. Um, our tool for this purpose is a reefing hook. I think we have about half a dozen, maybe 10 of these reefing hooks. Uh, we purchased them I'm pretty sure from Jamestown. I'll check when I write this up. Um, but they all come with a blade that's just about the thickness of the shank that you can see here. And before we lost him way too early, John LaFountain asked me to order a whole series of these so that he could customize them. And what he did was take each one, put it on a grinder, and grind down the cutting point to various thicknesses. This is the thinnest, and these are just wonderful for cleaning out seams. Now, you see, this is really kind of odd. Uh, these are all, as I said, all individual planks. And whereas normally this would be a plank, uh, maybe this would be, well, we can see it here. This is the starboard side of the engine bay. This is a single plank all the way across. And this is a separate plank. And we'll come back to that in a minute because we found some really disappointing issues here and actually on the other side as well. Now, we can't use a reefing hook to create the seam channel. We'll do that with a, a plunge router and a straight edge that we clamp down and we'll have to create all of these seams to be the correct thickness or correct width. And this is pretty much the correct width on a, on a shepherd. The shepherd decks uh, had seams that were really quite thin. And the other interesting uh, characteristic is that the shepherd boat company chose not to fill them with white sycophlex. In fact, once we get these open, we will use mahogany sycophlex as Shepard did, and we will not fill to be fair with the deck itself. What Shepard did was just to pay enough sycophlex into the seams so that they sealed the joints, they sealed the bottom. So you will find any shepherd that's been properly uh, preserved to have what appear to be brown or mahogany 
sycophlex uh, seams that are about half open in terms of in terms of their depth. This seam that you can see that is now filled with white material of some sort is supposed to be yellow and it will be yellow before we finish. But uh, before we get there, we have some serious work to do. Um, I get questions fairly often about what is this really dark area? What's happened here? I mean, we have stripped it with stripper and then we go back with the stripper and steel wool scouring pads that are repurposed out of uh, your kitchens and my, our kitchens and scrub and scrub and scrub and that draws, that bleeds all of the residual stain out of the, uh, out of the wood. But here, notice, it's black. Well, unfortunately, black means dry rot. Right. So as you can see, just with a fingernail, I can open all of this up. There's dry rot here. We've already examined her beneath. Uh, we have dry rot here. We have dry rot all along here. Here you can really see, see how the, See, I can just go all the way through and I'm taking wood with whatever the filler was in there. Uh, the result is on port, where we'll have to replace this entire panel. And then if we come over to starboard, you'll see that this is not the first dry rot rodeo for this uh, wonderful shepherd runabout. This whole piece of covering board was replaced at one time, was really replaced rather nicely. Unfortunately, whoever did it was a was superb working wood, but didn't pay any attention to grain. The grain on the rest of the covering board sweeps to, towards the center. The grain back here in this repair area sweeps 180 degrees out of phase with the rest of it. But look at this. See, this is, it's just, it's just gone. It just, the, uh, the wood has dry rot here. It's really, Rick was pulling the old white sycophlex out of here. And as you can see, instead of white sycophlex, he got rotted, dry rotted wood. This is all dry rotted. And sadly, this is dry rotted on both sides. So we, as on port, on starboard, we will replace this entire panel. And the dry rot has invaded the covering board right here. So our, we'll know more once, we, once we've released this panel, but I am fearful that we're going to discover that dry rot has invaded the covering board right along here. The same on the uh, port side. Uh, we will have to excise a narrow strip of wood and do a Dutchman repair and try to get this dry rot out of the hull. Um, it's going to it's going to be quite a challenge. This, the panel's easy. We'll take it out. We'll, we always keep ancient mahogany around and we'll be using, uh, if we can find it, pieces of that. Well, we also have some very fine Honduras mahogany that can fill these voids once we release both of these panels. Um, I would really like to replace this and get the grain flowing in the right direction, but uh, I just I just don't want to tear the boat apart that much. Um, and as we move forward, I'll have to say I don't know why Shepard chose this particular piece of mahogany. I don't know if it shows in the camera, 
but you can see there's sort of a bullseye here. Um, and then the grain continues, and this is original production, so this grain all continues rather nicely. Now, several places on the boat, I think we've mentioned before, uh, she encountered some hard things and lost the battle. Right here, there was a, was a dent, a declivity that before we started keeping it wet was, uh, oh, almost three sixteenths. Nah, maybe not quite, maybe an eighth inch deep. Um, and was badly discolored. So what we've done is sand the discoloration out and we're keeping, I mean, this is the lowest of low tech, the soaking wet microfiber rag uh, has been sitting here now for, uh, I, uh, since yesterday afternoon. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's drawing this out, I mean, now, it's still visible, but barely so. And of course, we'll be we'll be bleaching all of this, so that uh, once we're finished, it here and two or three other places will treat the same way. Here's a very simple trick for taking dents out of wood. Um, if they're really deep and really bad, uh, we keep a a steam iron I stole from my wife long ago in the shop and we'll take a, a, a wet towel like this and a steam iron and steam uh, the declivities out to the extent that we can. Happily on the foredeck, other than the fact that the seams need to be cleaned out, uh, the foredeck is just superb. Down tight, we didn't find any broken screws. Nobody's been mucking about with uh, replacing pieces of wood. Uh, so her foredeck is just gonna be stunning. So we'll keep working on her. And once we can replace these panels and get everything sanded fair on the covering boards, the decks and the sides, uh, and then attend to things like, I guess this was a Dutchman somebody at, attempted at one point. Um, they didn't do very well. So we'll replace that. Uh, there are several of these around the boat. But she's at least stripped to bare wood. And so we can begin the process of making her beautiful. So that's our update on Thursday. January 19, 2023, on our 1950 22-foot Shepherd runabout who's been rechristened Summertime. No longer Accra, we know her now as Summertime. And from now on, we'll, rather than deconstructing her, we'll be reconstructing and making her beautiful. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake